Views expressed by Casters Guild members are only the opinions of that member, and that could change from day to day. Guild members may use mature language, but that in no way means they are mature. Listener discretion is advised. There's probably nothing us geeks like more than sharing the things we love with other people, except maybe ranking those things so we can tell you why our favorite thing is the best. And since the internet loves a top 10 list, that's the spell we're casting tonight on Casters Guild. Thank you for tuning in tonight's episode of Casters Guild. I am your guild master, Rick Perry, and ranked number three on the top ten internet personalities you'd like to invite to your backyard barbecue. And I am your guild master, Baron. My things are better than yours, Kane. <laughs> and tonight, we're telling you why our things are better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, like we say at the beginning of every podcast, the opinions you hear tonight are solely those of the person you hear speaking, and those can change from day to day. So let's go over those opinions, shall we? I shall. <laughs> so we don't claim to be experts okay. on anything, but we are big old geeks, which means there's a lot of things that we like. And it wasn't that long ago that I was on Baron's Twitch and somebody was talking about their favorite movies and stuff. And I was like, you know what? I think our guild members would like to hear what our favorite stuff is. And I think this episode, more than any other episode, we'd love to get some discussion going. Listen to this episode. Come hang out with us on Discord. Tell us why you agree with our picks. Tell us why our picks were wrong and what our picks should have been. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to kick it off with top 10 movies. If we have to. <laughs> Baron, I think you were saying, I think we both did the same thing where we put like our favorite at the top of the list and then the rest of them are in like no particular order, but they are our top 10 favorite. Do you want to go ahead and kick us off? Yep. And I will also throw out this, this disclaimer. If you were to approach me in the street, even after this show and say top 10 movies right now, give them to me. One, it's going to take me an hour. Two, yep. the, the movies on the list will probably be different. My top movie will probably stay the same, but even my top movies, my top movie changes from time to time. Oh, yeah. And you know what? And I'm just going to say this right now. Let yourself be the same way. Don't let yourself stay stagnant. You know what I mean? It's like if it's your favorite, awesome. But let something else be your favorite if it feels like it's going to be. Don't cling to it. It's 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 not worth it. Don't let your whole personality be that like something is your favorite thing. It, like, right, yeah. Change. yeah. Yeah, that, that's another thing, too. All right, so top 10 movies. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start listing off my movies. I'm going to save my number one for last. And then if you if you want to jump in with any comments, feel free. So we're going to go with two Robin Williams movies. Okay. All right. What Dreams that's May Come. Oh, that's such a good one. Such a good movie, right? Yes. I, I recently watched, uh, do you know who Corridor is? The uh, special effects guys. I don't. Well, the, you should you should check them out sometime. I've been watching them for years. Um, you may have seen something of theirs and just didn't realize it was them. Oh yeah, absolutely, um, probably. probably. But they they do this thing where they'll examine special effects on a movie and talk about how it's good or bad. They they had some pretty shitty things to say about this movie. <laughs> I mean that's which, fair. Which is a shame because it. I thought it was great. Specifically, when he was walking through the field and slipping on the flowers and smeared them like an oil painting. Oh, yeah. I was like, that was beautiful. Why? I don't. What? Anyways. And then the next is going to be Hook. Okay. I forgot all about Hook until this moment when you mentioned Hook. <laughs> yep. Hook's, Hook's amazing. Um, that was actually one of my let's, sister's let's... favorite movies when I was growing up. So I saw it like all the time because she played it on repeat. That's fair. Now, I will say that I could probably have chosen several Robin Williams movies, but these are definitely my top two. Next is Pan's Labyrinth. Okay. Um, right. Love love that movie. I will say anybody going into that expecting any kind of Greek mythology fun times, you're not going to get it. It's, you know, they call it Pan's Labyrinth, but he's really just a fairy creature. So, yeah, but I, uh... it's great. 
I watched that movie for the first time and did not get what I expected at all. And because mm. of that, I I didn't like it at first. Also, I was kind of only halfway paying attention to it, which isn't good anytime you're watching a movie in a language that isn't your right. you know, native language. So uh, upon second fun... or third viewing, though, I, I could definitely appreciate the movie. Yeah. Fun fact, it's actually also my nephew's favorite movie and also inspired him to learn Spanish. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. Next is Gladiator with uh, Russell Crowe. Wait, I'm sorry. I had a brain fart. It is Russell Crowe, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. For some reason, I'm like, wait, that's not his name. <laughs> no, that's anyway, it, it is. It's Russell Crowe. Love that movie. It, it was definitely like when I was when I was younger, when it first came out, that was like my man movie. Like, that's that's what I and then, you know, I realized that, you know, it was my man movie because, you know, it, it, it's kind of like how I identify, like, as a man. Like, I, as a man, my level of masculinity is measured by my family. You know, my love for my daughter, my love for a, a paramour that I may have. It, it, it is, it, that is how I define myself as a man. And that's what that movie was about. You know, they took that dude's family away and he was like, all right, well, I guess people got to die. <laughs> so. Fun fact, when I was in, uh... I guess, middle school, early high school, I was super into making AMVs, animated music videos. And while Gladiator obviously is not animated, uh, one of the first fan-made music videos I ever saw was a Drowning Pool uh, music video set to Gladiator. Like, they took scenes from Gladiator and put it said, let the bodies hit the floor. And nice. that kind of kicked off. I was like, you know what, I think I want to do this with anime. And that was like the reason I started making AMVs. Nice. I always loved AMVs. Uh, my favorite one was um, Nine Inch Nails, Perfect Drug, set okay. to Fully Cooly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly which one you're talking about. Yeah. It's so good. It's like it fit a little too well. It was yeah. not comfortable with how well it fit. <laughs> so next is going to be Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Oh, geez. So it's, it's um, that's one of those, the exact opposite of Pan's Labyrinth. I went into O Brother expecting one thing and got Greek mythology. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a um, that, that's a heavy hitter right there. Mm-hmm. So good. I I it was so good it was surprising. Yeah. And that actually may be why why it's one of my favorite movies. If I went in expecting it to be that way, it may not have had that big of an impact. But oh, it's huge. So good. Next is American Werewolf in London. I was, um, I was waiting for the werewolf. <laughs> waiting for a werewolf. Little known fact, as someone who likes werewolves, loves werewolves, not a lot of great werewolf movies. That's true. I could probably count on one hand the amount of werewolf movies I've seen. And out of those, probably even less are like, are like oh, yeah, that was a good movie. <laughs> right. As a fact, American yeah. Werewolf in London, I, I think the only last time I saw that movie, I was probably in like elementary or middle school, and I don't remember a thing about it. Like, I, yeah, I may as well say I haven't seen that movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. So good. Best, uh, best transformation scene out there. All practical effects. Um, American Werewolf in Paris did not do it justice. It was all dumb stuff. So, um, Next is going to be Young Frankenstein. Okay. That was definitely great. Before I'd ever seen it, my dad uh, used to talk about it. And uh, this is when I was little. And he would talk about it. He would think it's funny. Mm -hmm. My dad, like, I'll, I'll say my dad had juvenile humor. But sure. but I, I will also say that when he was, when I first heard him talking about it, he was like, he was in his early 20s. Yeah. And it, it's it's funny to think of your parents back then it's like oh but you're my you're, you're my dad you know what i mean you're you're yeah. wise and you're old and then you're like oh shit i'm in my 40s right now and i'm <laughs> way less mature than i'd ever envisioned my father in his 20s right <laughs> <laughs> when he laughed when he laughed about this movie when he talked about it it was always at the knockers joke okay <laughs> right where you terry gar was getting out of the getting out of the carriage and he says what knockers and she's oh thank you doctor so <laughs> that was his like favorite part whereas whereas you know mine is where they're down in the basement 
and they're going through the different heads. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was such a good combination of jokes because he gets to the end and he busts out with that song and they're scared to the crap out of him. And then they get to the end and he says, Igor, Frederick. Oh my God. <laughs> <sighs> I think I was watching, oh, I was watching Gene Wilder talk about it and I don't, I, I'm pretty sure it was Young Frankenstein. It might have been a different movie, a different Mel Brooks movie. But he was talking about wanting to put a song and dance scene in it, like a long song and dance scene in it. I think it might even be the one you're talking about right now. And Mel Brooks had told him, no, it can't go in. And so he sat there and fought with him on it for like two hours until he was red and blue in the face. And then Mel Brooks was like, okay, it's in. And Gene was like, why? If you're just going to let me put it in, why'd you make me argue with it, argue with you for like two hours? And he was like, well, I knew if you'd argue for it, then it was worth doing. And that if I would said no and you just said, OK, then it wasn't worth doing. So that's fair. I, I'd like to think that they had a really good friendship and like he knew he just knew that about him or something. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good times. The next the next one I wouldn't recommend our younger viewers to watch this. This was a movie that I used. That I used to, I, I enjoyed the movie. I, I love, as fucked up as it was, I, I love Roman history and, you know, ancient Rome and stuff like that. Uh, but I would play this movie if there were people in my house that, you know, maybe I wasn't, I didn't know too well, or, you know, we were just getting to know each other. And I would pop this movie on just to see if we would get along. I don't do this anymore because I realize that that could be pretty problematic. Caligula. I don't think I've seen it. It's a uh, Cal- Caligula. It's oh my gosh, I'm I am blanking on a name, which is embarrassing because he's a big name actor. Malcolm McDowell. Good lord, Malcolm McDowell. I had Roddy McDowell stuck in my head. <laughs> he's a completely different movie series. But uh, Malcolm McDowell, do you know who that is? Uh, probably not by name. Like if I saw his face. Oh, yeah. If you saw his face, you know, he was in A Clockwork Orange. Oh, OK. Yep. OK. Yep. 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 Um, so anyways, it's about it's about the Roman Emperor Caligula. And if it if it helps tell you the level that this movie was at, Penthouse helped produce it. Oh, OK. All right. So, yeah, there's a there's a level of sexual content that I was not expecting. Right. I mean, um, is it? Did it manage to get an R rating? Like, it did, was it ever released in theaters? Or did they just, like, not bother rating they, the thing? They released a cut that was R rated. Okay. So, like, a theatrical cut, and then there's, like, the director's cut, which is unrated. Even the theatrical cut was pretty, pretty lurid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can get a, um, you can get away with a lot in R, but there there is mm-hmm. a line that, that is crossed eventually. But I will say that even with all the porn... It's actually a pretty good movie, too. I mean, if you've ever read up on Caligula, he, he is not right. And this this captured it pretty well. But yeah, it's a good movie. Next is uh, Princess Bride. Oh, such a good movie. God, yeah. I really need I really need to read that book. Like, I know that that movie is based on a book. And I need to read a, it, too. There's a giant bookstore near Nashville called McKay's that's actually getting some traffic on the internet right now. Like I think I've come across like three different TikToks where people were visiting Nashville and they went to McKay's cause, and they've always got copies of it in there. So I need to just pick up a copy and read it because the movie is, is so good. Oh, I'm sorry. Going back to Cal- Caligula. I completely forgot. Let me, let me, let me name off two more people that are in this movie. Peter O'Toole and Helen Mirren. All right. Okay, quite a cast. <laughs> shocked, I tell you, shocked. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I definitely agree. I have to, I have to read Princess Bride. The movie, though, you know, it's it's such a good story, mm-hmm. and it's told in such a good way. Like you could, you could, you could watch the, the. Okay, you know what? I will tell. I'll tell you this. If anybody's out there, like, oh, I like the book better. That's fine. This movie, in a very genius way, set up the ability of this movie to not be just like the book. Mm-hmm. Set it up perfectly. It's it's whoever came up with the idea to have Peter Falk reading the 
Fred Savage. Yeah, Fred Savage. It, they, that that person should just be. I mean, he's probably doing pretty good for himself. But yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because it's like, oh, but why why did this part not get included? Oh, because his grandpa didn't want to read that part to him. Mm-hmm. He wanted. To, he fell asleep and he just lost his place. It's yeah, perfect. Past it, yeah. Perfect. Now, at my all time favorite, uh, I feel like I feel like I flew through the list, so I'm going to build up to this one. It's legend. Okay. I didn't build up at all. I just told you what it was. Yeah, I know. Right. I know. Tim Curry. Right. Uh, Tom Cruise. I know. And it's like you, you tell people that. Uh, and Mia Sarah, by the way. Don't forget Mia Sarah. Yeah. Mia Sarah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me let me let me just go into this. Tim Curry. You see those memes online where they say, Oh, it says a lot about you as a person, um, where you, where you know, know Tim, Tim Curry, Curry from. from. And everybody's like, oh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> and then they'll yell at one guy that's like, Home Alone 2. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm Tim always Curry, like... Uh, Tim Curry made my list, too. So we'll get to that. We'll talk about that nice, when we nice. get there. Is it Home Alone 2? It's not. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm always like, you know, legend. Yeah. And most of the people, like, if it's a friend on a friend's list, they don't know what legend is so i'm like you gotta come on well, to be fair tom cruise tried to erase that movie what what is it with him getting in good movies and then being like i don't like it i want I, it gone i think it's any movie that actually shows you how short he is he doesn't like it yeah well, yeah but he was he was playing a boy in that i know you know what i mean it's like no 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 you needed to look shorter you son of a bitch he, okay here's the thing he doesn't like these movies because he doesn't want to look a certain way, right? Like, he doesn't want to look ridiculous. He doesn't want to be painted in a bad light or whatever. And then you see his role in a movie like Tropic Thunder, and you're like, you're okay with that, but you're not okay with Legend or Interview with a Vampire? Like, you just no, want to no pretend, he's not like, cool with Interview with a Vampire either. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's oh, not cool. got yeah. it. So, I don't know, man. I don't get it. Like, these, these great what, movies that he's in. Well, the thing about Interview with a Vampire, what kills me, it's like, he doesn't want to come off as homosexual or something like that. It's like, yeah, but you're being homosexual with Brad Pitt. Yeah. Like, no, nobody so, would blame you. Right. You could do worse, buddy. Yeah. You could do worse. <laughs> that'd, that'd be like someone's like, oh, I'm perfectly straight. Uh, didn't you have sex with Brad Pitt? Uh, yeah, but... Still perfectly straight. What's your point? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's just like the Ryan Reynolds pass. Come on. Right. Right, yeah. Like... <laughs> Straight men who are like, oh, I'd never, I'd never sleep with a man, and then Ryan Reynolds walks by, and it's like, oh, okay, well, right. <laughs> and that, and that's when, that's when, you know, us bisexuals will stand up and be like, no, 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 us first. we were in line, <laughs> us first, thank you. <laughs> we're not going to say you can't have a turn, but like, right, you could be there at the same time. I don't care, but <laughs> I know how possessive you can get, so stop it. All right, so I think I'm going to do the same thing. We'll go ahead and do my my top 10 movie list backwards. Uh, okay. At number 10, a goofy movie. <laughs> wow, that's a bold choice. It right is. out the gate. Right out, right the, out gate. the gate. You're hitting me with the goofy movie. Uh-huh. I, I feel like you know, this is me right now trying to be open-minded, accepting, but I feel like you just invalidated your whole <laughs> list. <laughs> Look, first of all... I'm looking. Power line is musical genius and the voice of a generation. <laughs> Second, when I was right out of high school, not quite in the Navy yet, I used to watch my niece and nephew um, every day from eight to eight. It was like a 12 hour thing. And one of the movies that we could always watch together was a goofy movie. Like my niece wanted to watch Little Mermaid 2 over and over again. That wasn't great. My nephew had his Little pen. Mermaid 2? Yeah. Yeah, the street. What is it with your family, ass. man? Like, <laughs> Goof Troop is like in your top ten. You have someone that's just binge watching Little Mermaid two over and over and over again. Come on, Look, this is my list, okay? Like, okay, I didn't say no, yeah, you're right. I'm you're not right. saying top my ten movies of all time. Again. What What was my name again? Uh, you, my stuff is better than yours. I believe it was. Yes, yeah, that, that's yeah. what I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, anyways. I will so, say that that movie made pizza look great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like, because of that movie, I could 
look at my nephew across the room and start doing like the little disco moves that Sasquatch does in that movie. And before long, both of us were like in a full, you know, Saturday night fever dance off. And like, this could be wow. anywhere. Like this could be in the middle of a McDonald's. This could be in the middle of a Walmart. It doesn't matter. Like, so yeah, I, 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 that movie has some good memories for me. And I will say this, and it has nothing to do with, with, with Pete in, in that TV show movie. But because I know who Pete is, and I know where he came from, and I know that deep down he's just a bad person, I really wanted PJ's mom to divorce Pete and get hooked up with Goofy. Okay. All right. Yeah, the headcanon accepted. Yeah. Because, I mean, come on, he's a villain in everything. Yes. Except for this, he's just maybe a gruff dad. He wasn't a bad guy in this, was he? I mean, he's definitely not a good guy. Like, he's not, like, a villain, but, like, he's definitely not the guy you want to be. Like, well, yeah, he's kind of like the annoying next door neighbor. Yeah. like, But he loves then, his son, right? Eh, it's okay. Like, he oh, loves his son, man. like, as much as, like, you have to. Like, it's one of those oh. things where it's, like, it's obvious that, like, he's more the my son is under my thumb type dad. Like, he's... Really? Oh, man. I'm going to have to go back and guy. watch. Yeah, he's I'm not gonna a I'm going to have to go back guy. and watch that show. Like, he's definitely not, like, the antagonist of the movie, but like Obvious, he's definitely, yeah, right. he's definitely like wait he's giving goofy advice on how to be a dad and like it's all bad advice like Troop was a TV show too right yes okay good I was like am I making this up now Goof Troop while it had the same characters definitely had a different premise and I think Pete was like an entirely different in Goof Troop that then he was more just like an annoying neighbor but and like yeah. he actually like he had like a character yeah. arc where he actually started to love his son but like in wait the movie minute. no it's just not a good thing. there were there were two goofy movies oh well there's a goofy movie and an extremely goofy movie. okay first off i want to say having i can say it out loud and it's like okay reading it seeing the word placement <laughs> i see what they're doing now yeah and that's smart yep that's smart because you know you think it's a goofy movie that's his name his fucker the fucker's name is goofy uh-huh I get it. You're saying this is a goofy movie. Yeah. I yeah. get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's like the whole thing. Like, if you see the uh, the opening credits, it opens just as a movie. And then, like, the word goofy comes and inserts itself in, like, a goofy way. And it's like, a goofy movie. And you're like, oh, okay. All right. Wordplay. I feel like I feel like I'm going to have to come back, watch the show again. All one seasons of it? Yeah, it it wasn't great. The the this the show wasn't wow. great. The second movie wasn't awesome. Um, the first movie though really enjoyed, and Powerline makes it for me. If I'm not mistaken, Goofy the Goof Troop came at the butt end of like the golden age of uh disney cartoons did it not yeah golden yeah, age being right. like ducktales and mm -hmm. like chippendales rescue rangers and stuff yeah. which let me tell you i didn't see one male stripper in that show at all <laughs> i didn't understand it i don't they like they were it. there they just weren't stripping like this was oh. their this was their day jobs got it yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right so next, next on my list um Hopefully, I, I mean, I try to be a good ally. Hopefully, I won't get a whole lot of hate for this, but uh, I'm going to put... Oh, hold on, hold on. Time out. Time out. I'm going to put another disclaimer on here. Anybody listening to this right now, we are of the age that we watched a lot of stuff from the 80s and the early 90s. A lot of stuff that we watched back then um, definitely hit in a different way. Yeah. Um, it was a lot funnier back then. Um, and we were also a lot younger. We are carrying over these loves and 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 stuff over to a our more adult lives, and sometimes we haven't seen this since we were kids. Yeah, we just remember that we love it. It's a nostalgia thing. Yeah. Um, if there's anything problematic that we say in these things that we love, please just bear with us. If you want, get in the comments, remind us. Hey, that was a little racist, and I'd be like, you know what? You're right. Yeah. You're right. All in the family was a little racist understand that the things we like about it are not those things correct but i put a couple series on some of these lists so i'm gonna throw the whole series out there and then tell you what's my favorite of that series um i put harry potter on my list and i know jk is a bit of a turf i'm not saying 
I enjoy her as person or I share her views, but those movies came out when I was a kid. I grew up with Harry Potter, as in, like, we were around the same age, like, the character Harry Potter and I were around the same age as those movies came out. And I'm doing my best not to support anything going forward, but you can't take those memories away from me and that enjoyment away from me. You know? uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always going to enjoy Harry Potter on Christmas, but guess what? I'm yeah. going to pirate it every time. Yeah. <laughs> and of the Harry Potter movies, I'm going to say Goblet of Fire is my favorite. You mean the one where uh, Dumbledore shook him like a baby? Yeah, it goes a little nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and it's funny, too, because when I first watched that scene, I had read the books, and I first watched that scene. I'm like, I don't think that's how that went in the books. No, not even, not even slightly. It, it very clearly states that that's not how it went down. Uh, yeah. The whole trials thing, it was very role-playing game, very video game to me, you know, where it's like, oh, you have to complete this trial. Now you have to complete this trial. How are you going to do it? How are you going to figure it out? So I, I love that whole movie and the book, of course. Yes. Yeah, I, I completely agree. My next one's going to be Sound of Music. You know, that has Nazis in it. It does. It does. They, they're not painted in a very positive light, though, I will say, in the movie. Well, that's for the best. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'll, and I'll say uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade almost made it onto my list. So mm-hmm. they don't paint them in a very nice light in that either. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Rightfully so. But uh, I've always loved musicals, and I think Sound of Music, maybe Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, um, was oh, my fuck favorite yeah. musical. Honestly, I was I was struggling between those two, like which one was going to make my list, um, and I wasn't going to put them That's both. That's okay, you there. hate Dick Van Dyke, I get it. <laughs> I love Dick Van Dyke. But, no, it's just, <laughs> Sound of Music was like one of my first musicals. I honestly don't know, don't remember which one I saw first, because like this is when I was like three, four, five years old. And I used to watch those movies on repeat and sing along to all the songs. It's a really good time all around. Yep, I had a movie like that. Almost made the list, but I, I didn't because I haven't seen it in a long time. Um, so I was like, man, eh, maybe maybe I shouldn't. But um, uh, the original Pete's Dragon. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I wore that tape out. By the way, anybody listening now, back in the day, we used to watch movies on tapes. <laughs> <laughs> Next on my list, and if you did get to happen to get this on VHS or DVD, you might have seen all of the alternate endings, because if you're watching it in theaters, you'd have to watch it multiple times in order to get the multiple endings. Clue. Are you talking about the Naked Gun movies? Uh, no, I'm, I'm talking about Clue. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> but Clue has, what, like five or six different endings? And if you watch it on VHS or DVD, you get to watch all five endings back to back. Um, and that's the Tim Curry movie that made my list. Nice, nice. Not a lot of people choose that one either. Yeah, I always choose Clue. I'm like, that. I love that movie. It's a great movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, you want to say star-studded cast. It, it oh, was geez. definitely a star-studded cast. Absolutely. It wasn't even like the young, hot actors that they put in that either. It was, you know, the generally the older comedian ones yeah, that they, they put in there. They put people in who had proved their comedic chops before this movie and they were like, oh yeah if you saw the cast of that movie before you saw that movie like it, when they were doing the the trailers and the posters like you knew you were going to get a funny movie you were like this is oh, gonna, yeah. this is going to be a side splitter definitely and uh i think um yeah madeline khan that was one of was that one of her later movies you know, i'm honestly not sure uh madeline madeline khan by the way also in young frankenstein she would have been in holy crap what never mind my bad holy crap wow lots of stuff yeah holy crap there we go well i will say wow clue came out in 85 yeah get out of here you know what i think i miss misunderstood when that movie came out so those older actors that i was talking about they weren't even really older actors at that time no but they were people who like had proven themselves before that point. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Like it Christopher definitely... Lloyd. Oh, yeah. And like that may what... have been the first that may have been one of the first movies I saw Michael McKean in, who was Lenny from Laverne and Shirley. Yeah. It's yeah, the only yeah. thing I knew him in. It's the only thing I knew him from. I, I, I watched a little bit of Spinal Tap, wasn't a fan of it. So I didn't take note of any of the people in it. Come right. to find out that all of Spinal Tap are like 
really well-known comedians, including right. Michael McKean. I'm like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean, like it since it came out in '85, it's not like we were teenagers right. or even adults oh, when the movie came out. Yeah, I was. I was six. I was, I was six. negative two. Great. <laughs> So anything they would have been in before that would have definitely been before our time, you know. Next on the list is Get Out. Get Out. Fine. I don't normally get into a lot of horror movies, and that's because I'm the kind of person, if you watch a movie with me and you let me talk during it, I'll ruin the movie for you, even if it's my first time seeing it, because I like to puzzle things together in my head, and I'm like, oh, this is going to happen before the end of the movie. And I've seen a lot of movies, so I got a pretty good idea of how things go in movies and so when it comes to horror movies a lot of times i can't be scared by them because i know something's coming yeah i'll be surprised by a jump scare sure but you know it's i have a really hard time with suspensions of suspension of just with horror movies and just i i can't get into them because i don't get scared i don't get the feelings but i'm just kind of like that was just a easy movie but get out had a lo- enough substance to it that even if i wasn't necessarily like biting my nails the entire movie and like you know scared of it the entire time i still got a lot out of that movie still it wasn't just like other scary movies where if you're not scared by it it's not a good movie like this is a good even if it weren't a horror movie it would still be a good movie on its own the story is right and of course it has a very important message that a lot of people still need to hear i i still need to watch that movie i need to watch i need actually okay so jordan peele Love him as a comedian. When he was a Mad TV, hilarious. When he went off to do Key and Peele, hilarious. What was uh, what was the the movie about the cat Keanu or something yeah. like that? Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it was so. I I thought that movie was going to be dumb, and it was great. Same, same. So when I heard that he was going off to do horror movies, blew my mind. Same. Blew my mind, but it apparently he's done really. Uh, and also, I'm not a horror movie fan either, so that's why I'm not rushing to go see them because I'm right. not a horror movie fan. I don't like the feelings that those movies give me. But I want to see that, and I want to see was it Us? Yes, is that the Us? Mm-hmm. And he has another movie coming out called The Cloud or something. And he was I think behind a lot of the new uh, Twilight Zones here. Yeah, which I heard did really well, but they didn't renew. Yeah, I think I think Black Mirror came out, and of course Black Mirror was like the new Twilight Zone, and then like people yeah. fell in love with Black Mirror, and so like when they tried to make Twilight Zone again, people were like, oh, they're just ripping off Black Mirror, and it's like, no, definitely the other way around, right. but like that's why it didn't right. work so well. Um, exactly. Yeah, that's fair. But honestly, I think that's one of the reasons I made sure to see Get Out, even though I'm not a horror movie fan. Because if somebody like Jordan Peele, who has like this super successful his career as a comedian, is going to risk it and do something like a horror movie, like you have this thing that's working, you have this thing with this successful career, and you go do something entirely different, you must really. Be- so I was like, I got to see this movie. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, next up, I had to put uh, a Tarantino film on there because I was once a teenage boy. I feel bad that I didn't put one on mine, actually. And uh, I chose Pulp Fiction. It's a good one. Yeah, it was tough to choose between like that and Reservoir Dogs and even some of the newer ones like Django Unchained or Inglorious Bastards. But Pulp Fiction is, to me, it's like quintessential Tarantino. Like, it's everything that makes a Tarantino film a Tarantino film all wrapped yep. up in one nice little package. And before anybody argues that what he's referring to is Reservoir Dogs... You're wrong. Pulp Fiction really sums up every single bit of what this dude is into. Yeah. It, even even the feeling of Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. He just took the, he just took a movie and just put a bunch of diff. He put you know what I think Quentin Tarantino just took out all his feelings and put it in this movie. Mm-hmm. And it's like you know Reservoir Dogs is just one of those things that made it into the movie. Now, don't get me wrong, Reservoir Dogs is a fucking great movie, especially for a one-room film. Like, for that entire movie, except for, like, the intro, like, whatever. That entire movie takes place in, like, one room, and, like, you get the entire story from it, even though it's all taking place in that one room. And that's an amazing feat, and a ridiculously good movie, but Pulp Fiction just gives you 
a different kind of feeling than Reservoir Dogs yeah, does. I agree. Not to mention John Travolta will never do anything better. Probably true. Next up, once again, I put a lot of series in here, so I put the Coronetto Trilogy. Um, if I had to pick okay. a favorite from the Coronetto Trilogy, uh, probably World's End. Really? World's End out of all of them? Yeah. I really like... So, one of the things I love about Edgar Wright as a filmmaker in general, and this is not the last time we'll be hearing from Edgar Wright on my top ten list, is he understands the medium of film. Like, he understands that you're telling a story with this movie, yes, but you could tell a story in a bunch of different mediums, and he understands that he's making a movie, which means it's a visual medium, it's an audio medium, you know, it's they're beautiful to watch, and at World's End, World's End has this wonderful symmetry where you watch the same movie twice. I was literally just thinking about what you're saying right now, and I was about to, I was about to say after you were done, I was going like my favorite part about Edgar Wright's movies is that you're watching the movie as you're watching the movie. Yeah, which may sound really friggin' weird, but you really are, and that's every movie in yeah. that series is you're watching the movie as you're watching the movie. He's giving you clues as to how this movie's going to go mm -hmm. <laughs> throughout the movie. Yeah, and if, with, like, World's End, you get to see... They do this pub crawl twice, and everything that happens that first pub crawl happens again in the second pub crawl. And on top of that, everything that happens references the name of the pub that they're at. Like, it's... Yep. It's just this wonderful put together thing that I think a lot of movies should do it more. Like, you know, it's people are like, oh, we have to make it more realistic or we have to do this. It's like, no, it's a movie. Have fun with it. So I, I just love that movie. I'm with you. I get it. All right. Next up at uh, number three, I put uh, Star Wars. And okay. And if I have to pick a favorite Star Wars, I'm going to go ahead and choose episode five. Okay. All right. That's that's usually a lot of people's go to's. Yeah. Is uh. The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just an all-around... It's just an awesome movie. I mean, like, there's there's not a whole lot to break down about it. It's just, if you want to sit down, eat some popcorn, and watch a movie, it's an awesome movie. Yeah, I completely agree. All right, Edgar Wright's going to get my number two and my number one spot here. So, number two is uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I thought that was going to be your number one, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, number, number two, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Love the the graphic novel series, love the movie, just a, a nice little love letter to video games and like that entire indie music culture. And once again, Edgar Wright just really has fun with the visuals and the music and makes everything match up. And it, it's fun. It's a whole lot of fun. Yeah. And then number one, Baby Driver. Have not have not seen Baby Driver. So I'm assuming I, I'm assuming it's about an infant that is driving um, around and like saving people, or am I just thinking of transporter? Uh, <laughs> God damn it! Uh, yeah, transporter. That's transporter. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. My bad. Baby driver. I won't give away a whole too much if you haven't seen it, but I would recommend watching the movie with headphones if that's something that you can do. The three D sound that you'll get from it is great, and also the main character, uh, baby has tinnitus and the entire movie um are you familiar with the term diegetic and non-diegetic sound uh no okay so diegetic sound in a movie is sound that both you can hear and the characters can hear so like if a song is playing on a radio in the movie both you and the characters hear that song non-diegetic sound is stuff that's like background music like the soundtrack things that the characters obviously aren't hearing but you are Mm -hmm. almost everything in that movie is diegetic sound it's practically a musical except nobody sings but everything in that movie happens to the beat of the song to the melody of that song really yes like it gets wow. there's even a firefight in that movie and mm -hmm. all the gunfire happens to the beat of the song that's crazy and the auditorially the entire movie takes place from the point of view of baby the main character who has tinnitus, which is a disability okay. that I myself have. And if you watch the movie with headphones, anytime the music stops, you can hear it. You can hear the ringing in babies. And for anybody who doesn't have tinnitus, it gives you an idea what 
that it's like to have tinnitus to where like the music stops and you start to hear the ringing and the only thing you can think is, oh my God, please bring back the music, which is what a lot of people with tinnitus feel like when they hear that ringing. Gotcha. So not only is it, so not only is it a beautiful movie, but like it touches me personally in a way because it's the main character has the same disability that I do. So, however, I will say, I'm not sure if you could call him the antagonist. He is the antagonist of the movie. One of the antagonists of the movie is played by Kevin Spacey. So if that's the kind of thing where you don't want to support Kevin Spacey right now, or if... Well, I don't think he, I don't think he gets money from that anymore. Yeah, probably I think not. He, I think he got his money and he's done. Or if you're the kind of person who uh, Kevin Spacey is your trigger for you, just even like seeing him in a movie. Oh, or yes, like yes. That, maybe stay away from that. That is one. a good point. But yeah. That is a good point. So, so yeah, that's, a, that's I think that's a pretty solid list. I don't think we didn't overlap once. Mm-mm. Not once. And I'm betting that we could probably have done an easy top 20. Yeah. <laughs> As a matter of I fact, didn't we put talked any about that one. Movie. We talked about that one so much. We're we're almost an an hour in as far as recording time. So like we might want to we want to start moving through these a little bit faster. <laughs> the next one the next one will be will be kind of fast because we do have a video game episode coming up and we do talk about video games an awful lot. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and go first. Uh, if you got any questions or comments or something, jump in. And when you go, I'll try not to interview you after each <laughs> after each movie. So my first one is going to be the... I know I've said time and time again that the Nintendo 64 is pound for pound the best video game system ever made. Mm-hmm. I only have one game from it okay. on this list. WrestleMania 2000. That's um, an interesting one to choose if you're only going to put one. Right. But this also has a lot of sentimental... Uh, in fact, actually, I mean, a few of these have sentimental value to me as, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? They're my favorite games. I'm not saying that they're the best games. I'm saying that they're my favorite games. So WrestleMania 2000, loved it. Great times. We we would just make characters. We had a whole rosters of characters that we made. And then we put them on uh, autopilot and let them wrestle and we'd have whole tournaments. Yeah, that's, that's pretty so, cool. That, that was fun. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2. Those are solid. Mm-hmm. That I mean, you want to talk about role playing games? That's how role playing games are done, right That's there. One of the first games, I think, if not the first game, where you could like actually make choices, and the choices that you made actually affected the outcome outcome of the game. Right. That really set a tone for a lot of games. Mm-hmm. Warcraft one through three. Okay. Yeah. I did not put any MMOs on this list. Right. But Warcraft one and one through three. Amazing. One and two or could be essentially the same game. Yeah. Three, three was definitely different, but it still had the same feel. If I had to choose, though, Warcraft two was probably my favorite out of all of them. I played a lot of three. Three was good. Mm-hmm. Three was essentially the. It, it was just the prequel to World of Warcraft. That's all mm-hmm. it was. Yep. Next is going to be Subnautica. I've recently started playing this game, and um, I love survival games, as I've said. But I don't like playing with other people, apparently. So this is a solo only survival game. And it's great. Next is and this this came really close to being my number one number one, but the original Final Fantasy. Yeah. Like the first one. Nintendo System. Original Final Fantasy. Loved it. If you want to hear more on our thoughts about that game, just we got a whole episode on it. So whole episode. Whole episode. Next is gonna be Donkey Kong. The arcade version. Loved it. Again, sentimental value. Sure. Next one, you're going to be familiar with this game. Also, another Star Wars game on my list. That's saying a lot. Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, love that game. Love that game. Mm-hmm. Love it. So good. I'm not normally, like, a lot of my friends really like Dark Souls and Bloodborne, and I'm not into that stuff. Like, I don't want to play a game that's going to have me banging my head against the wall over and over again. But... I got good of that at that game in order to play that game. It's because the story had me so hooked that I was like, no, I'm going to get good at this combat and I'm just so I can play this game. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I still, I still will say I played it on easy. Get wrecked. You elitists out there. Get wrecked. <laughs> Next is going to be Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I like the newer Assassin's Creed games that they're putting, point, putting out, mm-hmm. but you know, again, Odyssey is going to have a near and dear spot in my heart. Right. 
And then uh, I will say from three up, because I haven't played one and two, the Fallout series. That's yeah. going to be my favorite of all time, the Fallout series. Um, that hits all my buttons. Yep. All my buttons. It's a role-playing game, post-apocalyptic. I, I didn't even have the heart to put the uh, Elder Scrolls list on here because Fallout, the only reason why I like the Elder Scrolls series as much as I do is because it reminds me of Fallout. Yeah, that and the Elder Scrolls, you become a werewolf. That's true. <laughs> even though the werewolves kind of suck in there. Yeah. Like, why would I Why would I change when I have all this magic and these crazy swords and shit? Yeah, it kind of it kind of stunts you. A little bit. All right, so... Yep, uh, that's my favorite. Number 10, I put Castle Crashers. I've okay. always been a fan of the side scroll and beat em up and with Castle Crashers... Castle Crashers is the big reason that... One of the big reasons that another guild member and I are friends, that Brandon and I are friends. We built a great relationship just because one year for Extra Life, we blasted through that game from beginning to end on a 24-hour stream. So uh, it's got a special memory tied to it. Number 9, Persona 5 Royal. I had never played a Persona game before Persona 5, and that game had me hooked. The soundtrack is awesome. You need to check it out. Next on the list is Sly Cooper um, and the Thievius Raccoonus. Really? Yes. Okay. Love those games. Um, honestly, the PlayStation heroes, I guess you could say, you know, Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank. I love all those games, but I wasn't going to put them all on the list. So of all of those, Sly Cooper is top for me so that's the one that makes the list. and just to let you know so far i've not played a single one of these games all excellent games <laughs> the metroid series definitely had to make my list if i have to choose one i'm gonna say fusion hopefully when dread comes out that'll be my new favorite hopefully it's that good kirby's nightmare in dreamland is gonna be next i'm a big fan of the big puffball big pig puffball it's what a video game should be in my mind i mean like it's not super hard. It's fun. You know, you just go from beginning to end just gaming. Yep. Next on my list is Undertale. If I say Kirby is everything a, a video game should be, Undertale was a nice subversion of everything expect a turn-based RPG to be. And I love it because of that. Great characters. Nice. Still have not played a single game so far. <laughs> Next one is going to be Bioshock. Oh, we can stop the list now. I've played this one. We're good. Okay. <laughs> Um, I, I love that series just in general. It's, it's wonderful. Wonderful. I'm not a, I'm not a huge first person shooter guy, but that was great. Same, same. Number three, God of War. And of which one? God of War. And not like the original God of War, like the new one. They just called it God of War. The one that's like people dubbed dad of war. The one on PlayStation four. That's an awesome game. I loved the series before that. I'd played everyone before it, but God of War is one of those series I feel like it never got worse. Like with each game, that series progressively just got better. Fair. I will also say that, and I've said this before about other stuff, This the latest game kind of hit different. You know what I mean? Like the gameplay of it, just everything about it just seemed a little different, but you knew it was the same stuff. Yeah. The other thing is so, like yeah. a lot of previous God of War games are very linear. Like it's it's just a path that you're taking from beginning to end. And the new God of War kind of opened it up and you can explore the world a whole lot more. Number two, I'm putting the Fallout series, three and up, especially okay. three. That's the one I've spent the most time with. And then uh, number one, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Nice. Yeah, I, I figured a Legend of Zelda game was uh, going to make it up there for you. Mm -hmm. I, wa I was curious as to which one it was going to be. Yeah. Zelda's always been had a special place in my heart. Once again, I've got a whole episode on it, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about it. But when that game came out, Breath of the Wild, it just changed. I shouldn't say it should change my opinion of what Zelda could be. It renewed my opinion of what Zelda could be because it was never that exploration game again after the original Legend of Zelda until Breath of the Wild came out and like it became that exploration game again. You know, just go out and find things because you don't really know what's going on. And that's what I think a Zelda game. That's legit. I like it. So let's go ahead and move on to the next list. Which would be board games? Is yeah. that yours? Yep. All right. All right. So same as before. Save the best for last. I bet we're going to have some. We are. Yeah, we are going. We are going to have some overlap on this one. Probably. We are going to have some overlap. I I can see it right now. I can see it right now. I mean, good games are good games. Good games. Good games. All right. 
Are you a werewolf? We recently played that, and I don't mean I know a lot of people will go straight to uh, One Night Werewolf or something like that. Mm-hmm. That that is not the game I'm referring to, though. That game was inspired by this game. Mm-hmm. Are you a werewolf? You can play with like fifty fucking people if you wanted to, mm-hmm. and it's it's just great. I love it. Love it so much. Uh, Pandemic, mm-hmm. and wow. that seems to be a little on the nose right now, but. I, I do enjoy it. Uh, specifically, the Cthulhu pandemic is probably my favorite out of that series because they really rethought the whole thing. I never played that one. I've only ever played the original. I got I got both. We'll break it out sometime. Mm-hmm. Next isn't a board game, but I'm kind of counting card games in this too, obviously, sure. with the Are You a Werewolf? Flux. Mm. Love me some Flux. Flux um, is always a great get... one to break out when like people don't know what they're doing with board games. Because right. it's like, oh, you only need to know two rules. And then it gets it kind of adds from there. Yep. All right, you ready for the overlap? Yeah. Betrayal at House on the Hill. Yep. <laughs> See? See? I know. I know. That's just a that's just a great game. That that is a great you could role play with that game. And I'm not even just talking about with the uh Betrayal the legacy the stuff yeah. that came out. I mean with just the regular game. You could just set up a, a role playing game with that. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, next is going to be Santorini. This was a game that I actually kickstarted and ended up being a really great game. It, it's like it's a really basic kind of game where you're building levels and stuff. Basically, you're building the Greek island of Santorini is what you're doing. Gotcha, gotcha. And um, the gods are interfering and oh, so good. So good. Clank. If you have not played Clank, get out and play it now. It is so <laughs> good so good that that's basically you're you're breaking into a you're breaking into a dungeon to bypass a dragon to get treasure and get out and sell your stuff i'm a little ashamed um, to admit i still haven't played that one. Oh, so good i have clank in space because that's the only one i could get at the time but oh uh next is going to be tokaido beautiful game that's one of the games where i could play it and lose and just not care because i just had a nice relaxing time yeah next is going to be mysterium which is, that is, depending on my mood, that is my sometimes favorite game. Sure. D- depends on my mood, though. I think um, it also really depends on who you're playing with. Like, you really have to have a link with the people you're playing with for that game. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't going to say that. But... <laughs> Next is going to be Dead of Winter. Oh, such a good game. Such a good game, right? Mm-hmm. And then my all-time favorite. Can you guess what it is? It's Red Dragon Inn. Oh god damn it. I was like I was like, I feel dumb for not being able to think of what it is, and then you said it and I was like, Of course it's Red Dragon in. Of course it is. <laughs> Again, if you haven't as long as you're not guild member Michael Stewart, rush right out there and play it now. It's great. It's you know game. what? Play it in between your D and D sessions. You'll really appreciate it. You know another thing you could do? Make up your own characters. Mm-hmm. Use use the cards. Use whatever cards you want. I get it. Yeah. It's going to be hard to make your own card decks and everything like that. But you know what? Make your own characters. Yeah. Use your characters. Choose a deck. Mm-hmm. They they have a deck for each class, yeah. essentially. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, go for it. Even monks. Yeah, believe it or not. Even monks. <laughs> Do the thing. All right. Ball's in your court. All right. Number 10, I'm going to go with Munchkin. Specifically, Munchkin Apocalypse. I know you said you weren't a fan you. of that particular set. I fucking hate you. <laughs> you know, you know, it's weird too. It's me being a post-apocalyptic guy. Yeah, I can't stand that one. I just love a lot of the references it makes to different post-apocalyptic mm-hmm. things, and you know, you know how much can. Yeah. Um, next on my list is Time Stories, which almost feels like I'm cheating because it's really close to a role-playing game in a box instead of gotcha. a board game. Um, I'm familiar with those kind of games. Yeah, but the only problem with Time Stories is it has zero replay value. Like, once you play that game once, that's it. Like, you need to buy another expansion or something like that, get yourself a different story. Because once you know what happens, it's it's over. That's just like escape room games that are out there. Right. They're fun, but you're done after one. Mm-hmm. Once, once you play it, go ahead and pass it on to somebody else. If um, you haven't destroyed the box in the process. Right, of course. Next up, I'm going to put Quarriers. Oh, okay, okay. And I think I'm mostly putting Quarriers on here. Because after you introduced me to Dice Masters, somebody else showed me Quarriers, and Quarriers is basically just the box version of Dice Masters, where you don't have to buy any more dice. You know what I mean? Like, you buy Quarriers and you're done. But I will say, if you are listening to this and you like Quarriers, go check out 
Dice Masters. Yep. A collectible version of Warriors. Next up, I put Drop Mix on my list. You're looking at me like you don't know what it is. Have you ever heard of it? I may have misunderstood, uh, may have misunderstood what you said. Drop Mix? Yeah, no, I've never heard of it. So Drop Mix, you have like this DJ board, and you get cards, and the cards are all NFC chips. And as you put the cards down, it puts different parts of songs to like mix into one great big song. And you can hook it up to like a Bluetooth speaker or even has its own speaker. And you actually listen to the song that you're mixing. And it's just a whole lot of fun. Um, Oh my gosh. It's difficult to to play competitively. Like if you're like a competitive person, like maybe this isn't the game for you. It's more about, it technically has a competitive, like there is a winner at the end. But like it's more about making these songs with your friends and cool. I get you. Number six, I have Takedo. Um, Nice. Oh, more overlap. I, I love Takedo, too. You know, sitting down, I have it on my phone and my tablet. Yeah, it's just super fun to play. Number five, I have Dice Throne. Dice Throne is a game that I backed on Kickstarter. And then once it came in, it's a role-playing game and a collectible card game and Yahtzee all put into one. Nice. And it is, it's just a whole lot of fun to play once you get the mechanics down. Next up, I know you don't like this game. But uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse. Yes, I, I, I will say that I appreciate people liking that game. I just, I, I can't get into it. I think you just need to find a hero you like, man. And then you'll... I, I, I did, I did, and he was <laughs> slaughtered. Just <laughs> slaughtered. Next up, I have uh, King of Tokyo. And that's, case... that's a good one. I, that's case... on my shelf. Yeah, in case you don't know, I, I like rolling dice, man. I like, I like my Yahtzee-esque games where you're rolling dice and trying to put runs together and matches together and just i mean i like games like that so king of tokyo has all of that plus you get to be a giant monster tearing apart a city it's pretty good awesome. stuff can't beat it number two i've got dead of winter wow wow we've had yeah. we had some hell overlap on this didn't we yeah i mean good games are good games man dead of winter is just a good fucking game mm-hmm. um, better if you have a group of people who already know how to play because it's got a lot of rules and like you know there's a lot of things you got to keep track of and of all the games I would recommend this for, go out and buy an insert for Dead of Winter if you have the game. Get a broken token or whatever other company you want to support. They make game inserts to better organize your in your box. Highly recommend it for Dead of Winter. You'll play it so much more often if it's better organized in the box and easier to pull out and easier to put away. You'll play that game so much more often. I agree. And number one on my list, Betrayal. And specifically, Betrayal of Boulder's Gate. Um, oh, I still House haven't the played Hill. that. By the way. Betrayal of the House of Hill is an awesome game. I've I've talked about it a lot, but Betrayal of Boulder's Gate takes the same game and puts a D and D flavor to it, and has some changes to the rules that I think makes it a better game. To the point where some of the changes I've actually taken back to the original Betrayal, and I'm like, we're we play this game this way now. So yeah, it's it's a great game. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely definitely recommend anybody getting out there and playing that one. All right. So next on the list is superheroes. We're st- we're still doing top tens right now, right? Yep. All right. So we're gonna start out. We're gonna go ahead and start out with my honorable mentions, and that would be any of the teen superhero teams, oh, um, yeah, Young Avengers, awesome. Young Justice specifically. Uh, I love both of them and Jimmy Woo. All right. So <laughs> don't laugh. He's a magician. He is. He will be Sorcerer Supreme someday. Jimmy Woo will. I would be mad if he wasn't. Right? All right. So we're getting into the meat of my list. Hercules from the comics. Okay. Prince of Power himself. Amadeus Cho, who I think is the eighth smartest person in the world. Uh, he's also a Marvel Comics guy who also eventually became the Hulk. Oh. And... Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, I like, I like the Amadeus Hulk better. Okay. I just think he looks cool. Yeah. Next is going to be Valkyrie, specifically from Thor Ragnarok. I can see that. Yeah, I I get very specific, by the way, in in my superheroes. Uh, Valkyrie from Thor Ragnarok, because Valkyrie from the comics was kind of boring. They really put a spin on Valkyrie in the movies, you know, making her in the beginning an alcoholic, which let's let's talk about the level of alcohol that she would have had to have drank to be as drunk as she was all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I also I also like I have a headcanon of her and the Hulk going out to the bars after a big fight 
I feel like it puts a whole new meaning to the term drink like a fish. Like, she would literally have to, like, drink fish tanks I mean, of alcohol. Unless the alcohol on trash can world hits different, you know. It, it, yeah. Maybe some bar and wine is just way different. Yeah. Next is going to be Nightcrawler from the comics. Oh, good pick. But I will also say also from X2. Yeah. Um, because Alan Cummings is a gift to this world. Um, In my current D&D campaign, I have a player who built their entire character based around the Nightcrawler from X2. Nice. Nice. Good. Good. Next, it's going to be Magic or Ilyana Rasputin, specifically from the comics. Just amazing. Her story is off the fucking wall. And I love Magic characters anyways. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like that she's a mutant and she's she's essentially a sorcerer as well. Ruler of Limbo. She's she's been through some shit behind the scenes. Like before Colossus even realized that she was alive still. That was yeah, she'd been through some shit. Colossus. Yes, Colossus. I thought I said Cyclops <laughs> for a second. Okay, next is going to be Luke Cage. Specifically from the Hulu show, Luke Cage. Okay. I will say that I love Power Man and Iron Fist, but I feel like the writers of Luke Cage in the comics early on went to a how do I write a black guy seminar. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, but I really, really, really enjoy um, the TV show. I love the message that it was pushing. Yeah. I love I love how he depicted Luke Cage. I even love how he tried his damnedest to make Iron Fist look good. <laughs> Good on him for trying. Love yeah. it. You gotta love it. Uh, next is going to be Ant-Man, specifically Scott Lang from the movies. Okay. I've never been an Ant-Man fan, but then they put Ant-Man in a movie, and they give me things that I can relate to, and it's like, oh, also it's Paul Rudd. Yeah. Hollywood's vampire. It's... Leave it to Disney to pay, take a bunch of Marvel characters that like nobody cared about and make them everybody's favorite Marvel characters. To be fair, it started out, Disney didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah. Because Disney didn't do Iron Man. Right. And nobody gave a fuck about Iron Man when it came out. Or what? no one gave a fuck about Iron Man before he came out. Right, exactly. But then they made a movie and it was just like, what? And then Disney was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Next is going to be Deadpool in the movies and the comics, but not the ultimate Marvel Deadpool. He can fuck right off. Um, <laughs> Next is going to be Thor. Now... I do like his movies, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but I prefer the comic version. Um, the comic version of Thor is amazing. They definitely let him be a god yeah. in the comics. And then my all-time favorite, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, from the comics. Yeah. He's been my favorite since before I could talk, and it, he has just endured. And because of my love for Peter Parker, I love the ultimate Peter Parker that they did. Mm -hmm. I love Ben Riley. You know what? I am, I am about to change my vote to Scarlet spider, Ben Riley, but that's only because I like his costume. Yeah. But yes, I love costume. him. I, I love, feel like they got some inspiration for that costume for the, uh, homecoming costume. Oh, Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. But I mean, because of my love for Peter Parker, I love miles Morales too. Yeah. Uh, amazing character. I think every, I don't know, everything I associated. Like, I almost feel like I relate to Miles more because I love Peter Parker. Because mm -hmm. Miles is a fan of Peter Parker, like I am a fan of Peter Parker. And that is something I find relatable about the character. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's maybe why I like the Young Avengers, because... They started out and they were fans of the original Avengers. Yeah. They were fashioning themselves after the original Avengers. So I, I, I can definitely feel that. But yeah, there's my list. All right. My, uh, my list is going to be a little different because I don't read comic books. And it's not because I don't like comic books. It's because um, it's very specifically why I, I specified in those because I knew that you didn't really yeah. get into the comic books too much. But for our for our fans at home, it's not because I don't like comic books. It's because I looked at all my other geeky hobbies and all the money I was spending on them. 
and I looked at how much money I could be spending on comic books, and I was like, you know, I'm just not going to get into this one. I'm just not going to start this one and save my wallet. Um, totally fair. <laughs> uh, so number 10, I'm putting Captain America. Everybody loves good old boy in the good way. You know what I mean? Like, he is a homegrown superhero with it, depending on the version of the character, none of the <laughs> problematic stuff behind it. You know what I mean? Like, he right. is... He's just a good guy. There is, there is, he's the best version of a kind of person you can be. And uh, we always called my granddad our Captain America. So, like, there's, there's that uh, there as well. Yeah. Number nine, I'm putting Thor. And for me, it is the movie version of Thor because that's the one I know and love. Ragnarok is fucking awesome. Number eight, I put Saitama from One okay. Punch Man. Just being able to subvert all of those shonen tropes. And the dude just wants a challenge. <laughs> I'm with it. Um, I, I I will say, I I I didn't consciously avoid anime, but mm-hmm. it did pop up into my head, and Midoriya almost made it into my list. Yeah, well, because speaking, speaking of Midoriya, yeah. number seven on my list isn't Midoriya, but from the same series, I got Fat Gum. Okay, yeah, that's cool. A big fluffy boy, and I love him. Hell yeah! Number six, I put Cole McGrath from the Infamous series. Oh, nice! Yeah. Oh, nice! Love me. Nice. Okay, you went a different direction on that, and I like yes. it. Yes. Uh, well, that's the thing. I was like, if I'm going to do wait a minute. 10 superheroes, I'm no, not wait a, a comic book guy, so I'm going to pull superheroes from all over the place. I'm just realizing you're cheating. <laughs> you're cheating. You're adding to your other lists. I kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number five, I've got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If I have Legit. to pick one, it's Donnie. Okay. Um, number four, Kick Ass. Okay. From the movies, just because I haven't read the comics. From what I understand, it's a pretty similar character either way. Yeah, yeah. It's similar enough. Number three, Batman. Bruce Wayne, Batman. Because he's the goddamn Batman. Fair. And all of my friends who like really love the Batman know I give Batman shit all the time because they love Batman and it's fun. It's because, you, it's because you love him. Yeah. But I, I do love <clears> me some Batman. Hell yeah. Number two, Black Panther. Fuck yeah. I, about... Again, I will I will say the movie one for me too. Yeah. Again, because early Black Panther, it's almost again like the writers didn't know how to write a black guy. Right. And they asked another white guy to tell him how to write a black guy. <laughs> but like, even if even if like, not that I would want to, but even if I wanted to like pick a white guy, there is not a king superhero. There's not like a superhero who's out there who's the king of his country who's a but uh, you know, a, a good king to his people. Not, not counting the underwater guys. Right, right. Of course, so, you know what I mean. Like, and even then, like Aquaman can kind of. Uh, anyway, I mean, name. Well, okay, okay. Namor is also a bad guy. Yeah, I get it. Okay, kind of a dick. But Black Panther, just the fact that he is the whole king of his country, yet is still a protector of his people, and just is all about what's the best for my people. That's just awesome to me. Holy. Definitely, Um, yeah. And number one, Spider Man, specifically Miles Morales. And like I said, I think I think it was Peter Parker all the way up until I met Miles and started. I think I'm trying to think of when the first time I met Miles was, and it might have been in one of the Ultimate Spider Man video games, or it might even been a comic book. But I've always loved Miles. The new movie he was in, the Into the Spider Verse, awesome movie. If you haven't seen it, get out and see that movie. Awesome. Also the 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 newest Spider Man game. Oh yeah, great game, great game. Also, anybody out there, and believe me, I I've done my fair share of fielding these people in real life. If if you just don't like Miles because he's not Peter Parker, let me just tell you one thing: Peter Parker would want you to love Miles Morales. Yes, he would. Okay, yes. so why don't you do us all a favor? Get on the Miles train. Yes, and love Miles with us. Okay. He's an amazing character. He, he is a different Spider-Man. He is not trying to be the same Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. I know his name is Spider-Man, but he's he's a great character. Get get on board. Okay? Not to mention, Again. he's he's coming. I mean, like he's coming to the MCU. I don't know when. I'm not going to say it's going to happen. In, I, uh, his uncle's already or here, whatever. But like, yeah, the, we've he was, already he, was, he was already mentioned. He yeah, was mentioned. He's coming. And that was not just a cameo, like like a, nope. a thing to please. Like he's coming. Yep. All right, on to TV shows. Yes. Uh, again, I'm going to start this out with honorable mentions. Reading Rainbow and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Oh, my God. 
Okay. I feel bad These for were... not having Mr. Rogers Neighborhood on my list now. Like yep. oh, they God. were vital and essential to my formative years, and they are still special to me. I I, I don't even care that they're old. Let your mm-hmm. kids watch this shit. It's great. And if you haven't seen right. that, have you you've seen the the movie with Tom Hanks? Name? Yeah. So yeah. good. Like I saw that movie at just just when I needed to see that movie. When I rented it from a red box, I was having a really shitty day. Watch that movie. Ugh. Yep. Waterworks. So good. Yep. All right. Here we go. Brooklyn Nine Nine. Almost made um, my list. That's that's a that's lot of my funny... honorable mention right there is Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah. Funny stuff is my way to go. I'm I'm letting you know now. Funny stuff is my way to go. Don't don't look for anything deep and meaningful into my stuff except for my honorable mentions. Next is going to be Good Eats. Oh, okay. Definitely that show taught me how to cook. Yeah. Next is going to be Supernatural. That show is older than my daughter, which is weird to think of. I um it's not on my list, but I just started watching Supernatural very recently. Like I'm still in like season 2 or 3. So yeah. like could could very well make my list in the future. Yeah, I I will say that seasons one through three were just dog trash um so just kind of stick with it um next is going to be what we do in shadows oh yeah that's a i mean again you're just gonna get a bunch of funny stuff from me so next is going to be psych which is probably good so i forgot all about psych the the best it is the best sherlock holmes adaptation out there okay you remember the guy we did our star trek episode with yeah I almost started a psych podcast with him before I started this podcast. And is psych on your list? It's not. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Wow. wow. Gus, Gus would be disappointed in you. He'd get over it. He would. He would. Uh, I still next call is be my main... car the blueberry. Like, I have, oh. I have a blue hatchback. I still call it the blueberry. Yeah. yeah but is psych on your list? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> It is now. <laughs> Let me watch uh, next is going to be uh, next is going to be the Mandalorian because I think they got it right. Yeah. Um, yeah, they finally got it right. Next is going to be a little show from way back in the day on HBO called Rome. Uh, I've never seen it. C- can you guess what it's about? Uh, I would assume Rome. You're right. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> uh, it's a great movie. A lot of people in there that you'll see, you'll recognize doing stuff now. Mm-hmm. A couple guys got their starts there. And uh, hell, one of them was The Punisher. Oh, okay. Um, in one movie. Don't get excited. It was just oh, one of the movies. Oh, okay. And yeah, it wasn't no, that one. That. Well, um, not the Dolph Lundgren one. The the one after Thomas Jane. The, yeah, anyways. Yeah. It wasn't great. Next is going to be Adventure Time. Good stuff. Adventure Time. Next is going to be Star Trek, and on my list I wrote all of them. Fuck it. Even the Orville. I'm counting it. It it Um, counts to me. I mean, we talked about that on our Star Trek episode. It counts to me. It counts. Oh, and I put a note in here. I said, TV shows have essentially been my whole life, and I hate that I am reducing it to 10. (laughs) That's fair. It was a tough one for me, too. It was a tough one for me, too. let, Let me say that my parents weren't the let the TV babysit him kind of thing. Mm. I had to fight for every hour of my TV time. Ooh. Why don't you go outside? How about you shut the fuck up? I didn't ever <laughs> say that. Don't tell my mom or dad that. I didn't say that ever. Hopefully they're not out loud. <laughs> I didn't say it out loud. In Anyways. <laughs> Believe me, one of, one of the big things about being an adult, I've said this when I was a kid, one of the big things about being an adult with me I can watch TV whenever I want. <laughs> that was a lie. So my all-time number one favorite, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Mm, good pick. Thank you. All right. Number 10, Doctor Who. I almost put it at number nine just because, just so I could say you don't skip nine, but nice. Doctor Who, love that show from beginning to end. I, I still love it. I'm actually watching a lot of the newer episodes uh, now that I have an HBO Max account and... Number nine, uh, Happy Days. Classic, nice. It's an, it's an old show. But used to watch it with my grandma. It's just good memories tied to it. Not to mention that's where the term "jump the shark" comes from. Is Happy Days, and yep. it really does jump the shark at the exact point where they jump the shark. So you don't have to watch it after that. <laughs> Number eight, I put The Mandalorian because you're right. It, they got it right. They got it right. 
I, I, I can't stress that enough. They got it right. And I don't mean they got a show right. No, they got Star Wars yeah. right. Yeah. They got it right. I have spoken. <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender. It's an all-around great show. Yep. I And I will say that I only have one animated show on here. I could have put so many fucking animated shows on here, including the latest Masters of the Universe, which if you haven't seen it, you should rush right out and see it. It's it's catching a lot of crap, but it's it doesn't deserve it. Why? Oh, uh, oh, are... because it's about Hila. Yeah, I love I love the people that are like, why call it He Man? They didn't, they you didn't. dumbass. Yeah, they call it Masters of Universe. Tila is a Master of the Universe. Mm-hmm. Every fucker that had a every person that had a action figure, which is all Master Universe ever was yep. was a big yep. fucking commercial for toys. Mm-hmm. Get over yourself. Every person that got a action figure was a Master of the Universe. Mm-hmm. You know what? I want an Orco episode, and I want you people to shut the fuck up while I'm watching it. <laughs> I would love an Orco episode. <laughs> they did him right, by the way. It was great. The uh, Next on my list, when I was growing up, there was a block of Nickelodeon cartoons that raised me. Um, I only wanted to put one on here, so I struggled as far as which one it was going to be. I put Hey Arnold. Okay. It's yeah, a great good. show. It's a great show about found family, and that that's yeah. important to me. So. Yeah, people need to people need to realize that you can find your family. Next on the list, Rick and Morty. There's a lot of good reasons to watch that show. The fandom is not one of them. Uh, I know. <laughs> I almost didn't put Rick and Morty in, on the list because I'm almost ashamed to admit that I'm a Rick and Morty fan because of a lot of the fandom. <laughs> but yeah, I do love that show. Uh, number four, Community. Dan Harmon is hanging out in my list. I still need to finish that. Oh, so good. You've at least seen the D&D episodes, right? Oh, yeah. There, there, there are two D&D episodes that are very good. Yeah, I need, I, I need to get on it. Number three, uh, Cobra Kai, which was <laughs> a YouTube premium show initially. Now it is available on Netflix. Fuck, I was not expecting that show to be as good as it fucking was. I, I, have, I have still not gotten on board yet. Oh, I my haven't God. started watching. I know. I started watching it because I happened to have a YouTube premium account, and I'm like, you know, let's just check this show out. And Tiff and I sat down and watched it, and we were like, oh my god, that was really good. Another episode? Yeah. And they were like, okay, maybe one more episode. We gotta be at work tomorrow. Okay, another episode? We watched the entire first season that night. And like, we didn't go to bed until like 3 or 4 a.m. because it is so good. Love that show. Number two, The Office. A lot of single camera sitcoms make my list. <laughs> I was a Parks and Rec guy. Oh, okay. I mean, you can be both. You can like both. I can't. <laughs> I think I'm a The Office guy just because The Office got to me first. That's um, probably... Well, I've watched mind. a lot the of... The Office Parks got to me Rec. first, and I just didn't like it. Okay. That's In fair. fact, I, I on purpose avoided Parks and Rec for a while because I was like, I'm not going to like it because I didn't like The Office. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's fair. And uh, number one, Scrubs. You know, Scrubs was real close to being on my list. Mm. Real I close. watched through the entirety of Scrubs, even that terrible last season. I won't watch that. <laughs> at least, at least once a year, I watch through the entire series, just because I love that. I love that show that much. Not to mention, a lot of my favorite nicknames came from the fact that I was in the Navy, so people called me by my last name and Scrubs. And you put those two things together, and a lot of my favorite nicknames for myself came from that because everybody knew me as Perry. So people called me Pear Bear and oh, yeah. oh my gosh, <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Good. I, you know what? I think we're doing pretty good. I think this is these are solid lists. Yes. Yeah, these are solid. Like if you've not checked out stuff that are on our list and I've already like I'm going to check out stuff that was on your list that I hadn't seen, you know, so check out the stuff that's on our list, man. It's Please do. And please share with us your list. please. Yeah, please. Yep. Get on our discord. I, I put a post up. Get on there. Tell me what you're thinking. All right. So we're moving on to uh, tabletop role-playing games. I made a list of 10. I will cut it down to six. Okay. Because we were supposed to do a top five, but I don't feel like I don't feel like I would do my list justice if I cut off <laughs> one of them. Well, to be fair, I mean, like, if you want to share with us the entire top 10, that's fine. The only reason okay, how about, I how did about this? five for the next, our next two lists, I did five because... I don't have no. The top that's 10. fine, but real quick, I'll run. I'll run through my the four as honorable mentions. How about that? Sure. All go right, these it. four honorable mentions. We're gonna go with Tiny Dungeon, Tiny Dun- uh, Tiny Apocalypse by Gallant Knight Games. Great, great game. 
Deadlands, great game. Starfinder and Star Wars D20. Specifically Star Wars D20. All right. Now we're going to go to my top six. Cyberpunk 2020. Good. Um, it's, it's so good. Love it. And uh, then I'll even just, I'll just mention Shadowrun next. It's, it's a different system, but it's just cyberpunk with magic. Right. Again, I love both of those. In fact, Shadowrun Sega Genesis game is probably up in my top favorite games, too. I, I actually probably should have put that in there, but I didn't. Call of Cthulhu. Not only is it a good game, you can play it however you want. You can go Lovecraftian, or you can just go slasher horror. We don't care. It's also a great system, especially if you like skill-heavy games. But also that system, the Chaosium system, runs a bunch of other games, too. So you learn Call of Cthulhu, you learn a bunch of other games, too. Changeling the Lost, literally the only White Wolf game from the new World of Darkness that I like. Oh, my God. You know what? We're going to knock off one of the four honorable mentions and make this a top seven because Scion, Scion is a White Wolf game that is one of my favorites uh, of all time. Love it. You play Children of Gods. It's great. You've always told me about that game, and I've always, I've always found it very interesting. So good. So good. D&D 5th Edition, specifically. We talk about it all the time. Yeah. Moving on. And my all-time favorite tabletop RPG of all time, Werewolf the Apocalypse. Oh, um, so good. Love it. I've talked about that, too. But, yeah. All right. Do you prefer that tabletop or LARP? Oh, tabletop all the way. LARP yeah. is toxic. Um, okay. I, I like LARP, don't get me wrong, but the only way to play LARP is in big groups of people. And what comes with big groups of people? Toxic people, yeah. Yep. Okay, ideally, if you could manage to get a big group of people and not have toxic mm. people in there, would you LARP. prefer the LARP? Yeah, okay. LARP. I will, I, well, only because, only because that it just adds something to that interaction, and it's just wonderful. It's beautiful. I love it. it, it it's hard. You know what? I'm going to say it's hard to choose because LARP is actually a completely different system and adds a different nuance to the game. It, it's a completely different game. So yeah, it, it's 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 hard to choose actually. So I uh, probably have to, for different reasons, have them both up there. But I will say that I like Vampire LARP more than I like Vampire Tabletop. Okay, yeah, I can see that. So so many pretty but pretty goth people. <laughs> so many. Anyways, it's probably easier to find a group that isn't toxic the vampire than it is other LARP groups no. too. No, no, okay. <laughs> No, they're pretty toxic too. Yeah, I figured. And I don't mean all. I don't mean all vampire game. larpers. I don't mean all vampire larpers. But you You're get a game like games. this, people are going to get competitive. When competition comes in, so does the toxic nature of things. Yeah, you get more people that want to win and not tell a good story. All right, so I sat down to make this list, and I was afraid that I hadn't even like played five different tabletop role playing games. But then I memory started coming back, and I was able to make this list pretty easy. So, number five, Monster of the Week. Okay. It's an apocalypse apocalypse engine game, uh, very similar to that City of Mist game that we played, as far as the rules of it and the way you play it. But the setting is that of a Monster of the Week television show. So, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Supernatural, Charmed, you know, all those kind of 90s, you know, hey, there's this monster, figure out how to defeat it, move on. And it's if you're into those kind of television shows, you'll love this game. Number four, Vampire the Masquerade. I feel like this one made the list because I've played it and I have good memories attached to it. You know, um, all that matters. I haven't played a whole lot of it. I couldn't tell you a whole lot about it, but I did have fun playing it. Number three, uh, Exalted. Another White Wolf game. Mm -hmm. Just cool mechanics all around. Oh, yeah, definitely. Number two, I've talked about it all the time, Dread. I love, I love it when mechanics match theme and it just does really well in dread and number one D, D. i mean like i'll be playing it till the day i die specifically fourth edition no i'm joking fifth edition, fifth edition <laughs> okay i'm leaving <laughs> I, do lo I do love fourth but fifth edition is it, it's, it's better it is it's a better game yeah i mean you can't go wrong with D. &D. yeah if it won for D, D, a lot of these other games wouldn't even exist so yeah why not super true yep all right, now we're going to go into our top five books. And by books, I'm assuming we mean novels, but I wouldn't be against people throwing in comic books or cookbooks or whatever you want to enjoy. I also came up with another top ten. 
But what I will do is give you an honorable mention and go to my top five. My honorable mention being an honorable mention because I'm currently reading it. And it's called The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. It's amazing. It is a story of the uh, Trojan War as told through the eyes of Patroclus. Oh, I say about the Trojan War, but it's essentially the life of Patroclus as told through the eyes of Patroclus. Great. It's great. I haven't finished it yet, so no spoilers. <laughs> um, so we're going to go to my top five. Ready Player One. Oh, good stuff. Nothing, nothing like someone my age reading Ready Player One and uh, getting a huge kick out of it. It's, it's nostalgia bait, and I don't care. Oh, it absolutely is. Absolutely. The Hobbit, specifically from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, right. I would even I would even go so far as to say the Lord of the Rings trilogy wouldn't even make it in my top 10. American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Love that book series. Next is the uh, the original Dragonlance Companion series. So the uh, Dragons of Autumn Twilight, Dragons of Winter Night, and the Dragons of Spring Dawn. Is that right? Spring Dawn? Yes, because then next is Summer Flame, but we don't count that one. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, those first three books, love it. They really started my love in D&D. And then finally, my all-time favorite book series ever is the Dresden Files series by Jim Butcher. It, 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 that's another one of the books that I thought started out great. But once I went back and reread them, it definitely had a rough start. I don't think he had a good grasp on where the story was going to go sure. at first. But man, once he hit his stride, it was great. All right. Um... Number five for me is going to be The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Very interesting magic system in Name of the Wind. Kind of makes me wish there was a tabletop role-playing game based on it. Knowing Patrick Rothfuss at some point in time there might be. He's <laughs> got to finish the series first. <laughs> Get it done. Number four, uh, Servant of the Bones by Anne Rice. Um, okay. It's I like, know, I've heard of that. I know a lot of people are going to go straight to the vampire chronicles with her or her witch books or where they meet, but servant in the bones is a standalone story. I suppose it takes place in the same universe. I mean, it could, but it, it just a really good story. Number three for me is going to be Harry Potter. Once again, not saying I support JK, but the memories of those books aren't going to go away anytime soon. Just remember guys out there. If you want to read those books, there are plenty of ways to get those books. Mm -hmm. Would that do that don't involve going to Barnes and Noble and buying them? Yep, you don't have to give her the money. And if I have to pick a favorite from the series, it'd be Half Blood Prince. Number two, Ready Player One. I knew we would have some overlap there. Yeah, Ernest Klein, I think probably is a little problematic too. But once again, oh, oh, definitely. You can you can yeah. see the underpinnings of his problematicism. Yeah, is that? <laughs> yes, I. You know what? He the point of language is for someone to understand what you're saying. And I understand exactly what yeah. you're saying. So he, he definitely has that, the male hero syndrome thing going on. Yeah. So he tries to mask it a little bit in the beginning. Oh, definitely. Play, ready player two. Like he's, I haven't read like, it yet. Oh yeah. There, there's a spot where he's like, Oh yeah, I'm cool with everybody. Like I'm not problematic at all. Males, females, everything in between. Like, yeah, it's cool. And it's like, Mm, trying a little hard there buddy yeah it's definitely it's not a bad series it's not it, well i mean like it's in my top five so yeah. i'm not trying to say it but if you just gloss over uh, uh some parts it's 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 good like you, you know you can, yeah well i mean like even the one part where i i don't know screw it we always talk about spoilers yeah. i mean he even has a main character who's transgender yeah which i thought was cool yeah but but you, you could kind of see even in that introduction where it, where it was like, oh, I'm surprised that you are this person that you are right now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, OK, why did you even have to make a big deal out of it? Just yeah, it's just is what it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely, definitely let people because, you know, there's only so many so many ways where you can introduce a character without just coming right out and saying they're transgender in a book. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think, I think they, I, I'm, I keep coming back to it, but I, I think fine. they did an okay job introducing this character. Again, I'm not going to say any names, but yeah. you'll get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I don't know. Like I said, it's it's almost one of those. I can't put my finger on it, buddy. But there is something problematic with what you're doing right now. Yeah, I'm well, just honestly, gonna read this book. I'm not even a hundred percent certain if um if that particular character is trans as much as they are using a different gendered avatar. But oh really? Yeah. I mean, like if you read the book, I'm pretty sure they're just they they kind of explain why they're using the avatar that they're using, and I don't think it's because they're trans. Oh man. I'm going to have to go back and read that because I think I just assumed that he was transgender. Yeah. Especially once you read Ready Player Two because Ready Player oh, Two. Oh, damn it. Ready, to, Ready Player Two, they just refer to her as she for like the entire book. No, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I'm. Yeah. I'm a little <laughs> upset by that. I'm a little upset by that. Yeah. So. Anyway, anyways. And number one is going to be Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Douglas Adams. You know, it's funny. I've never read it. I feel horrible I've never read it, because the movie is great. Well, you are in for a treat, and one of the great things about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is it's been in pretty much every medium that exists, and in every medium that exists, it's almost an entirely different story, and that is on <laughs> purpose. I mean, so, like, you can't go the, go, the book was better, because it's a different story. Like, it's so... I just recommend you can get it at pretty cheap anywhere at this point. It's yeah. considered a classic at this point. So, And if you like it, then go ahead and read the rest of the series, too. I think it's right up your alley for the type of humor that it is. Oh, I'm so, sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Is Mos Def in it? Sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah, solid. Solid. And because we decided to put a... Uh, Put put this uh, into a higher gear. We uh, I think we 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 got done at a good time. Yeah, yeah, we did. About normal. Yeah, about normal. Yeah, if I if I would have if I would have interviewed you after every single one of your things, though, we'd still be going. Oh, yeah. we'd still be in. We'd still be in board games. Yes, yes, we would. <laughs> Which, if that's what you guys want, first of all, let us know. Not saying oh, we yeah. won't do it, or you know, come and talk to us on Discord. We'll gladly speak with you. In length about in things. length. That's kind of the point of being a geek, you know, is sharing the things that you love with other people. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, I want you guys to come and talk to me about these things that I love and tell me about the things that you love. Tell me about why your things are better. Come come enjoy all the things we love, all of the love and none of the gatekeeping. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's something that you'll get from this particular group of geeks. I mean, unless you come in, you talk about how much you love J.K. Rowling, then, you know. Yeah. Uh, I will hold that gate. Yeah. Hold the line. Hold the line. <laughs> no turfs here. All right. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Caster's Guild. Find us on Discord and all the socials. Email us at castersguild at gmail.com with your list. And um, while you're putting together your list, why not visit geekyclean.com slash discount slash guild decree and relax in a bathtub while you're debating your list. I know that's what I did. Uh, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't do it right now lists if I weren't relaxing in a, and like, man, I wish I could remember which one it was that I used because it had like an awesome, like almost cologne like scent to it. It was very relaxing. And the dice that came out of it were a nice sparkly translucent blue very cool oh pretty yeah. so yeah we'll see you guys in the next one bye bye everybody bye 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 goodbye bye 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 this is my top 10 favorite goodbye actually bye 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 goodbye